So get good having you watch us and uh, and learning all we can in Bible prophecy and uh, there's so many things for us to learn uh, in the Word of God and you know the Bible is uh, you know the Bible is is the only book that was written by God you say well the Bible was written by man well we are God's creation we are God's we are we are God's son sonship sonship is is a part of what uh, what we have with God we're not merely we're not a, we're not a merely a servant or a slave but we're actually sons and God puts his spirit in us and so we are an extension and so God through the ages used his people and he worked and spoke through his people and what's you know what's amazing about all this to me is the fact that that when you're studying the scriptures you can actually see the prophetic significance you can when you when you study the scriptures and you see all of these prophecies and how perfectly they align and fit together and uh, if you're if you've been following me carefully you know we talked about casual observers if you've been aggressive and and thoroughly studying behind these lessons then you under then you've already came to the level of understanding a lot of the things I'm talking about the Word of God is amazing it absolutely is amazing the accuracy of the prof of the prophecies of the scripture and so we're going to pick up where we were you know in our last lesson we was talking about Germany being uh, being the leper the leopard and the Bible says that the leopard had four heads if you remember that and so let's look at this uh, so dominion was given to the leper Germany and this was prophesied over 2,000 years ago in Daniel 7 and 6 in the book of Daniel 7 and 6 this leopard was within three days of conquering the world under Adolf Hitler but God decided world government was not ready to come on the scene yet Hitler was very close to winning World War II they were grinding us down as in what was called the pincer movement I don't know if you've heard this uh, if you've read this in your history but they were grinding us and down in what's called a pincer movement this is where forces simultaneously attach both flanks of an enemy formation at the same time if they had been successful if Hitler had been successful in this we would have to we would have to had sued for peace under Hitler's terms Winston Churchill called for a worldwide day of fasting and prayer back then when this was going on because Hitler was winning so easy he was defeating us he thought <laughs> he thought something was wrong he thought there was a trap laid for him that's what Hitler was thinking so he called all of his leaders back off the field I mean they, they brought they, they he caught he called his leaders off the field when they were advancing whenever they were conquering us he called the leaders back and they were livid with anger because they were winning and Hitler got in the way of of what they were doing so Hitler sent them back he sent them back out and uh, but what he what he did not what he didn't know was during this time of consultation during this time they were having the meetings 
and trying to figure out what was going on, all the boats of Britain and France pulled out. Around 350,000 Allied troops to safety. See, they were, before Hitler called this meeting and brought them together, they were winning, they were overcoming, and our, and our, and our troops and the Allied troops were dying. I mean, they were slaughtering them. They were slaughtering them. And then when they pulled them back, while they had this window of opportunity, they began to move those troops out. They had them stacked up like cordwood on those ships. So Britain and France was moving them out and moving them to safety. They, moved, they were moving these troops day and night out of harm's way. And that's what saved the war. When Hitler started his war machine back up, there was only roughly 40,000 left. If, Hif if Hitler had only listened to his military leaders and not had pulled them out for that meeting, they would have crushed us. So what do I credit this to? What do I credit this to? God. God's intervention. Winston Churchill called for that worldwide day of fasting and prayer. They considered God in the equation. And because of that, God blessed them. These troops that were saved were able to f go on and fight another day. So they moved at Normandy. You remember the Battle of Normandy? And that was the turning point in the war. Winston Churchill called this a miracle. This became known in your history books as the miracle of Dunkirk. It's called the Dunkirk evacuation. They had soldiers standing on the ships when they were moving <laughs> when they were moving these troops out they were all standing like they were all having to stand stand up for that, for that trip just standing they, I mean they had them packed in there like cordwood to save their lives so this is what took place during this war now back to the leopard <coughs> the beast had also four heads and dominion was given to it Daniel 7 and 6 says this leopard beast had four heads the lion if you remember and the bear only had one head but this leopard had four heads why did the leopard have four, have four heads remember now what we talked about before a beast represents a nation. The Bible lets us know that, it, that the beast represents a kingdom or a nation or a ruler of that nation. Multiple heads on a nation, this is key. This is what it represents. Multiple nations are, multiple, excuse me, multiple heads on a nation represent how many times that nation will rise and fall now how do i know that what, what makes me think that i'm accurate in that because in revelation 17 10 there is a seven-headed beast and it says right there that there are seven kings five are fallen one is and one is not yet come. So how does this fit Germany? Think about this. Germany had what was called the First Reich, the Second Reich, and the Third Reich. And the word Reich means kingdom. So these were considered four kingdoms. Hitler was the leader of the Third Reich, or the Third Kingdom. Well, now there is a Fourth Reich that's rising up. There's a book written called 
the fourth and richest Reich, richest Reich how the Germans conquered the post-war world by a man named Edwin Hartrich. So the leopard has dominion Remember the leopard tank is the official tank of Germany. And this leopard has four heads. Now let's look at, again at the verse. After this I beheld and lo another like a leper which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. It had four wings of a fowl so what does this mean four wings of a fowl we know that the eagle's wings on the lion meant something very special so what could this what could what could these wings of a fowl mean there's another nation and their national symbol is a fowl or a rooster which is a, considered a foul. The nation of France has a national sing, symbol called a rooster. There's a paper that's called The Economist. I don't know if you've ever read them. I've, I've seen them on newsstands. I've read some of them. But in this specific article, it says the words France faces the future with a picture of a rooster on it. They use the symbol. In fact, they also use this symbol of, the, of this fowl or rooster on postage stamps. Ever since World War II, France and Germany have worked together to rebuild Europe. They put together the Franco-German alliance and were bonded together to rebuild Europe. So now you have these wings of this rooster or fowl attached to Germany, which is the leper. So these things were kept from Daniel all the way back in 550 B.C. So he's not able to understand them. You remember the scriptures where it said, Oh, Daniel, these things are sealed up till the time of the end. He, he wouldn't allow Daniel to understand, even though Daniel was the one who wrote it down. But Daniel didn't understand what, <clears throat> what it all meant. Because the Bible said that it was saved for those in the end time. That was the purpose. Now we come to the last and most important beast of all. Daniel 7 and 7 says, and this is an extremely important beast. In fact, in our next lesson, we're going to expound on, uh, in our, our, in, not the next lesson, but our, ne our next uh, segment of lessons. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to start dealing with this subject of this last beast. But it says in Daniel 7 and 7, After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Now, I want us to notice something. Now, when Daniel saw this beast, he could not compare it to anything he ever saw. It wasn't like the lion or the bear, the eagle or the leper. The one thing we know is that the, that the dominant characteristic of this beast was the ten horns that were attached to it. You know, the horns is what they used to push and to conquer and to fight and to overcome. So what are the 10 horns represent here? Again, we don't have to guess because verse 24 tells us. In Daniel 7, 24, then the 10 horns out of this kingdom 
are ten kings that shall arise. The ten horns out of this kingdom, it defines it as they are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall arise after them. There's another one that's going to rise up. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three of these kings. So there's one beast or nation. And ten kings that shall arise. This points to some kind of federation with this nation we find this in revelation 17 and 12 as well now let's see what revelation 17 and 12 has to say and then the ten horns which thou saw speaking of the same thing the ten horns which thou saw are again the ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Now, when it refers to one hour, it's not talking about you set your clock and it's, they're only going to rule for an hour. That's not when it's speaking of an hour. It's just referring. This is just a figure of speech. In other words, they're not going to rule very long. It's going to be something that's going to happen. And it's going to and it's going to end quickly. one hour this is speaking of the same thing found in Daniel 7 24 but who is the beast the beast is referring to that last world dictator again it's talking about the ruler of this last beast this last beast <coughs> This last beast is a world power, a world government, a new world order, if you please. In fact, it's on the back of your $1 bill, but we're going to talk about that also. But this is the last one world power. Now, has there ever been world powers in the past? Yes, there have. In fact, there's a story in the Bible. You remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar when he had the dream. You remember that? Of the image. And he refused to tell his, his wise men. He was going to put his astrologers and his wise men to death because they could not explain this dream. So here comes Daniel along and explains this dream and saves all of their lives. So Daniel goes on to explain this image in his dream. So Daniel has the same dream as Nebuchadnezzar had. He has the same dream. And so he's explaining to Nebuchadnezzar what he dreamed. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that wild? Nebuchadnezzar had the dream first, but Nebuchadnezzar didn't want to reveal it to the wise men or wasn't able to to reveal it he wanted them to tell him what he dreamed without telling them what he dreamed <laughs> so anyways here's Daniel and he says you seen this image here O king and the head of that image I'm just gonna make this kind of short and sweet get to the gist of the point there was a head of gold there was arms of silver. There's a belly and thigh of brass and there's legs of iron. This is what he seen. Now, that head of gold is you. Can you remember the, there's there's the head of gold there's the there's there's the what what does a beast represent? A beast represents a kingdom and it also represents the ruler of the kingdom. So Daniel could have said that head of gold represents Babylon. He'd have still been correct. But he says, that head of gold is you, O king. Babylon ruled from 604 to 639 B.C. 
And then he seen these arms and breasts of silver, which is the Medo-Persian Empire that came in after Babylon, defeated Babylon. And it ruled from 539 to 3, 331 B.C. And then after the Medo-Persian Empire, you had a man come along by the name of Alexander the Great, young ruler. And he cried because there wasn't it. Whenever he ruled the whole world, he cried because there wasn't any more worlds to rule. He was very ambitious. So the Grecian Empire ruled the world from 331 to 197 B.C. And then there's these legs of iron which is the Roman Empire. Remember Jesus Christ when he came back was during the time of the Roman Empire which started in 197 B.C. and crossed over into 284 A.D. No, each one of these represents a kingdom with its ruler that was a world dictator. This is what Daniel saw. These were the only nations in history that made it to world conquest. But there is one more to come seen in the feet mingled with clay. Now you remember there's another one. Daniel also saw feet of iron mingled with clay. The feet of iron mingled with clay is the Holy Roman Empire, which started, and I may not be pronouncing his name, but Charlie Mang, I, I think is the way you pronounce it, Char, Charlie Mang, in A.D. 800 to the seventh trumpet or second coming. In other words, it started during this time. People think, oh, it's gone, it's over. Well, you might be surprised of the Holy Roman Empire and what it signifies. The feet of this image, now this is what Daniel saw, this iron, this iron he's looking down at the feet of this image. And he sees the feet of this image having ten toes that represent the same thing as the beast with the ten horns. They are the ten rulers of the kings that will form a federation with the Antichrist. You see, he sees the ten toes and the ten toes that he's looking at is the same as the ten horns on the image that Daniel sees. And the Antichrist is the ruler of this, of, the, of this Holy Roman, he's a ruler of this Holy Roman system, this New World Order system. And they will rise, this, the Antichrist will rise from those ten rulers. He will come out from that. They will come from the Holy Roman Empire. You remember we talked about true Christianity versus false Christianity. They will come, he will come from that, that Holy Roman Empire. You know, we talked about a political and a spiritual ruler. It's called the Holy Roman Empire because it has a political arm and a religious arm to it. You know, in Europe, they always had a pope that ruled with the leader in, in Italy. Italy always had a, a political leader and a religious leader that shared power. There's the Antichrist and the false prophet the Bible speaks of. This religious arm perverted the doctrine of the apostles through the ecumenical councils of this Roman Catholic Church. This is the system that I'm talking about that will rise up when this last world ruler, the Antichrist, 
is revealed. There will be a political leader, the Antichrist, and there will be a religious leader, a pope, a false prophet. That the Bible talks about. Revelation 17 tells us that this religious harlot church and her daughters will be judged and the voice said come out of her in reference to false Christianity. As Daniel watched this image, now let's go back to what Daniel is seeing here. As Daniel was watching this image that he had this dream of, As he watched, a stone came crumbling down and crushed the image. Crushed it. Symbolizing. Go back to what we talked about before. The seventh trumpet right here on our chart. So the seventh trumpet is the same. It, this is all speaking of the same thing. The stone crumbles the image the new world order the you remember the Zechariah talked about the war where the governments of the earth come against Israel and they fight at the battle of Armageddon this is the crushing this is all under the seventh trumpet this is what happens we not only come to an end of human government at this time but also an end to the false Christianity and false religion as a whole. The false prophet, if you remember, is also cast into the flame. What does this stone represent? Remember, Jesus Christ is the stone that the builders rejected. The same as the head of the corner. Jesus Christ is God. And we could go to a lot of scriptures to, to absolutely put that in stone so back to our reading <clears throat> and the ten horns which thou saw are the ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but received power as kings one hour in other words fast with the beast so so right here when we get to the seventh trumpet the battle of Armageddon the armies of the earth are going to are going to yield their power over to the Antichrist. This is going to happen at the seventh trumpet. They're going to give him temporary power. Now you remember the Antichrist comes on the scene at the middle of the 70th week. And so we have three and a half years, which is 42 months where the Antichrist is going to be revealed and he's going to dominate, fight, and make war with the saints. This is called the wrath of Satan. Remember the Bible says that the devil is cast down having great wrath because he knows what? That he hath but a short time. So he's coming in here in this last three and a half years and then right here at the seventh trumpet, right here, this is where the stone comes down, Daniel saw. The stone smites the image. And it crumbles all of the powers of world government. All world, all human government is over forever at this point. Jesus Christ reigns from then on. At this point right here. Thank God. And we have ran out of time. Uh, so we're going to uh, go a little bit farther in our lesson. And so we are going to look forward to you being with us in our next lesson. And uh, until then, uh, I pray that God will keep you. And uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing you then.